Okay, this next story was best described on Twitter as the 2019 headline generator working overtime. And in it, we've got a Saudi lobbying group, we've got propaganda, and we've got detention facilities somehow all mashed together. And we come to this story through the great work of senior investigative reporter for the Young Turks, Ken Klippenstein, who joins us once again. How's it going, Ken? Hey, good to see you. <laughs> uh, good to have you here, uh, great work on this story. So uh, what have you got and how'd you get it? Uh, leaked to me was a script uh, for a video that sought to, uh, frankly, whitewash um, the uh, work that a, a child migrant detention facility in Homestead, Florida was doing. What's interesting about this detention facility, because there's you know multiple of them across the country, this particular one is the only one with the distinction of um, being a for-profit <laughs> child detention facility. So there's a sort of dark quality to it um, owing to that. Yeah, and look, any sort of for-profit jail or prison, like it seems sort of perverse, but the idea that they're profiting from having kids in there, even worse. Before we get more into the propaganda, though, this this homestead location, tell us a little bit more about it and its reputation. Well, it had been protested for you know months and months prior to its ultimately being closed at you know around the same time as this script was produced. I redacted the exact date. Um, to protect sources, uh, since it's unclear, um, you know how many uh, different um, companies this may have been distributed to. Um, but w- what the script shows, uh, or to answer your question, um, Amnesty International um, earlier this year visited um, Homestead twice and described, um, you know, not just really horrible conditions, but um, conditions that violated um, U.S. domestic law. So um, I feel like that pretty much says it all. And as of right now, are there kids being held at Homestead right now? After the protests and the amnesty reports, uh, the kids were removed, but there were reports, I believe in the Miami Herald, if I recall, um, citing multiple uh, federal officials saying that they're trying very hard and expect um, to have it reopened um, in the next, in the coming months. Okay, well, I'm sure the conditions will be great then. Mm-hmm. Uh, but anyway, so <laughs> all of this, just so that people have an idea of what was actually going on, uh, the, the nature of it, the fact that it's for profit, that kids had actually been, had to be taken out of it. So in advance of that, there's this Saudi group uh, that wants to do a sort of propaganda film. Um, what do we know about what that film would have looked like? Let me quote a little bit from it because it's pretty okay. surprising. Um, so to start out, the script says it is not about facts and figures, quote, um, and then instead uh, intends to focus on quote the emotive sense of the community and speaking to the nature of their caring relationship between the um, detention facility officials and the children there. So um, you know this seems like propaganda to me, to be frank. Uh, it sounds pretty much exactly like propaganda to me. So they're going to produce this thing, um, and they're not—they're not actually like in the movie. They're not talking to the kids, right? The kids are effectively going to be props, right? That's right. And they blur the kids' faces out, and you know that may be pursuant to whatever rules. But the focus seems to be on how great this facility is. Let me. There was another quote um, in it. Let me see here. Um, let, let get a load of this. Quote, we see exteriors of Homestead. It is a former military base, but we shoot it to capture as much beauty as possible. <laughs> that sounds like something out of Star uh, Starship Troopers. Um, okay, right? so I, I under- <laughs> as much beauty as possible. Well, I, look at this, this chain link fence, so orderly, so geometric. Um, <laughs> so do, do we know if this movie was actually made or anything like it? Or was this just a proposal that never never actually went anywhere? Well, what's interesting is that um, the woman that's listed as the producer, um, of the of the script, she actually is uh, works for um, Caliburn, which is the private corporation that runs Homestead. Mm-hmm. Um, so that suggests that there was you know internal momentum for this. Um, but she was pitching this to um, I think she worked in collaboration with Corvus. With, yeah, she worked in collaboration with Corvus on the on the script, which was the um, Saudi uh, comms and, and lobby group. Um, so it's just a bunch of different, you know, it's kind of a cast of characters. And the problem is I asked every single one of these guys from Corvus to Tatiana Anderson, who was the producer to Caliber, and nobody responded to any of my requests for comments. So it's hard to know exactly where they're in the process, what happened to the video, if they're still working on it, and so on. And so I know that most people, you know, that you don't hear the name Jamal Khashoggi much anymore. Um, but I can't help but remember that the Saudi government brutally murdered and um, eviscerated this uh, this journalist, a lot of lobbying groups stopped working with Saudi companies and things like that. Is it possible that that is one of the reasons that there was no action on this? Or do some of the interests in the US military still seem perfectly happy to, to be working with Saudi companies? I don't think that 
they, you know, would have given them any serious pause because, again, she was working for Caliber and, um, when she put this together. But that certainly was a concern for a whole bunch of other lobbying groups um, that, you know, backed off of working for the Saudi government. And I should point out, these aren't just, you know, wealthy Saudi nationals that um, this comms department, that this comms shop was working for. This is uh, overtly the um, Saudi government, and they actually registered under the Foreign Agents um, Registration Act. Okay. Well, so I'm curious too, I know that you've been soliciting information um, both through Freedom of Information Act requests and also uh, people who've been leaking you documents. Um, I have noticed that in, in no small part, thanks to Donald Trump's you know, public just falling apart over the past few weeks, there's been less talk about the network of concentration camps. Um, based on your talks with people working there, is there any reason that we should believe that the conditions have become material, materially better than they were back during the public scrutiny of a month or two months ago? Absolutely not. Um, I think the extent to which these corporations, especially in the um, private camps, although they you know win government um, awards um, since they're contractors, the extent to which they care about it is to make it look as though they're better, which exactly is what um, this 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 film seems to uh, be attempting to do. Okay. Well, uh, as always, we appreciate you uh, helping to, uh, to to explain your work to us. Um, if anybody has leads, how can they get in contact with you? Um, hit me on Signal at 202-510-1268. That's a free um, encrypted um, cell phone app. Um, or you can you know, find me on Twitter at Ken Klippenstein. Okay, Ken, as always, thank you so much. Hey, thanks a lot, man. Check out the Damage Report podcast each day, wherever you get your podcasts, whether Pocket Casts or Stitcher or iTunes. You can join me as I give you the news and stories you want with a range of co-hosts and interview guests jumping in on the fun each day. Again, that's the Damage Report, wherever you get your podcasts. And if you get them at iTunes, don't forget to rate and review. Sometimes I'll read them live on the show.